Aside from the obvious like wearing a helmet and having lights on your bike, there are other ways to be a safer cyclist. Now this may sound contradicting but hear me out. If you run the roads, you will definitely encounter some vehicles. Learning how to ride one-handed will give you a free hand to do turn signals. Signaling early can alert vehicles behind you that you are about to turn. Example, you want to turn right and the vehicle behind you doesn't. If you give a turn signal, the car behind you will think, oh, since he's gonna turn, there's no point overtaking, so the driver will just patiently sit behind you. But if you don't give a signal, the driver will think, oh, since he's turning right, I might as well overtake him. So he goes to overtake you, and then you pull off to the right. So to save yourself some stress and the driver, just give some hand signals. Now unless you live in the peaceful countryside, you've most likely encountered vehicles flying past you at light speed making you shit yourself. So in order to counter this, I start my rides at 5am or sometimes even 4.30. This ensures that even at the end of my 2 hour ride, I don't encounter rush hour traffic. Because the last thing you want to deal with are people rushing to work. It's an inconvenience for them and for you. Now obviously not everyone can ride early in the morning or late at night because, well, you know, responsibilities. But if you do get a chance, then I highly encourage you to do so as it is a lot safer. Now this one's kind of a double-edged sword. On one hand, vehicles will actually notice you and your friend and not just on the other hand, vehicles might see you as a nuisance as you are now a bigger obstacle. You're kind of like a mobile chicane. So it really depends on what country you live in. Example, you live in Portugal, which is listed as the number one friendliest country in the world. It wouldn't be that bad to ride side by side as I'm assuming the people there are very patient and nice. Although their law does state that you can't do so when there's reduced visibility, so I'm assuming when it's raining and also when there is high volumes of traffic, but I'm not too sure as they just kind of directly translated it. But if you live in a city like me, where life is very fast paced and everyone's trying to rush from point A to point B, it might not be such a good idea to ride side by side as there are a higher percentage of drivers that will overtake you in, well, suboptimal ways. Now personally, this may sound obvious, but hear me out. Now I'm not talking about looking out for stop signs or red lights or pedestrian crossings, I'm talking about riding defensively. Now personally, some examples of the way I ride defensively are as following. Number 1. Looking left and right at traffic junctions even if I have a green light. Number 2. Constantly looking back every, I don't know, 15 seconds to check for cars in case I encounter a pothole and have to swerve at the last minute. And number 3. Imagining a what if situation. So what if that car was gonna pull out in front of me? What would I do? These examples of defensive riding have saved my life on multiple occasions, but one very notable occasion is still fresh in my memory as if it happened yesterday. So I was coming up at an intersection and as I previously mentioned, number one, look left and right even if you have a green light. And that's what I did. And because I did that, I spotted a car that was potentially going to turn and hit me. So after I noticed the car, I did number 3, which was to plan out a what if situation. So what if he turned? What was I gonna do? Would I break or would I turn right? Which leads me on to number 2, which was looking back every 15 seconds. Because I looked back, I knew that there were no cars behind me. So when the car eventually pulled out in front of me, I had two options swerve left or right. Ideally, I would have turned right, but I'm not the best at bike handling skills, so I turned left and was out of harm. Of course, I was really pissed off and I did some interesting hand gestures, but if not for riding defensively, I don't know if I would still be here. Now to sum it up, those are just some of the methods that I use to be a safer cyclist. Of course, you don't have to follow them meticulously, especially for the third one, which is the riding defensively one, you can actually change it up for yourself. So for example, you don't want to look back every 15 seconds, which is understandable as, you know, paying attention is important. But uh, yeah, if you have learned something from this video, then feel free to leave a like and a subscribe. But anyways, as always, I will see you guys next time. Good night, everybody.